Born in 1925, Ibrahim Al-Kazi is one of the most influential Indian theatre directors and drama teachers of 20th century Indian theatre. He also remained the director of National School of Drama, New Delhi, from 1962 to 1977. He's also been a noted art connoisseur collector and gallery owner and founder Art Heritage Gallery in Delhi with his wife Roshan al -Khazi. Trained at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, he won the BBC Broadcasting Award in 1950. He has directed over 50 plays, including famous productions of Girish Karnad's Tughlaq, Mohan Rakesh's Ashar Ka Ek Din, Dharambir Bharti's Andha Yug, and numerous Shakespeare and Greek plays. So please join us as we converse with director, gallerist, collector, and a patron of the arts, Ibrahim al -Khazi. So welcome to the studio. It's a privilege to have you here with us. As much a privilege for me and to be associated with you. So going back, yes. taking you down memory lane, Yes. how were your years of growing up? Well, you required something larger than a lane, you see, because you, <laughs> you require something broader than that, etc. Because, nail, you know, a lane is always a sort of furtively going behind people's uh, small little hutments at the back, etc., etc. No, but here was a challenge on a national scale. And therefore, what my interest in theatre, which may have been on, uh, shall we say, in a formative stage, because it had not really found a, its a proper means of communication, etc., it was important for me to go through this, because through the subject matter and through the very means that we were using, it was connecting me with the whole vast tradition of Indian cultural activity. And uh, whether it was verbal, or whether it was in terms of uh, manipulation, etc., or whether it was musical, or whatever, it was an enormous range, you see. Mm -hmm. And that, um, being a person of the theatre, which largely depended upon the vocal communication, that this was extremely important for me to know, to understand, and to use, to cultivate, and to expand. So any influences in your formative years which indicated that you were actually going to devote your life to theatre and the fine arts and then take it to the next level? Yes, but what about that? Do you want to know how I took those steps? Uh, right, sir. In fact, uh, uh, particular influences that happened in your young age, in terms of your bringing up, your education, your exposure? To begin with, one started in the larger metropolitan cities in India, starting with Delhi to begin with, because that was in the centre of uh, this uh, vast uh, subcontinent. And um, it was played a very important role in the formation of the mind and the thinking and the personality of Indian individuals. And uh, therefore brought out the best, the strongest and the most uh, important elements in your uh, approach to the multiple problems associated with the communication of things through the art forms. So you helped set up the National School of Drama and it's yes. one of the foremost pioneering institutes in the country today. Yeah, yes. What was that experience like? Well, it was a very important experience for me because I didn't want to work in the English language. I wanted to work in Indian languages. And naturally, Hindi became an extremely important thing because it was a national language and I could communicate with the far corners of the country. And as a matter of fact, because we were in Delhi, Delhi attracted people from all over India. And then they went back again, with hopefully, with their minds open, much widened and so on. Their horizons also widened and the rest of it, etc. And their whole concept of what it is to be an Indian was far more than the parochial con the concept that you may have had as one grew up in remote centers, the Indian subcontinent. And so the Indian languages are extremely important, Hindi being the most important. And because we had come to a stage, historical period, in the development of Indian culture through independence, therefore it had to be through Indian languages. So earlier, before that, while it, English had been celebrated, etc., here it was the Indian languages that were going to be celebrated. And of the Indian languages, Hindi more than any other language, because in a sense, in inverted commas, it was universal as far as India was concerned. So, Indians' cultural and language diversity. Yes. Uh, how do you think that adds to the flavor of theatre as a whole in the country? A tremendous amount. A tremendous amount. Depending upon how you approach it, you see. I mean, one can approach it with a narrow lens, as it were, you know. And on the other hand, you can see, you can manipulate just as you <laughs> manipulate things on your viewers, etc., so similarly here, you get your focus, etc., right, because you're dealing with a vast subcontinent. 
with a subcontinent which is as large as any any subcontinent anywhere else in the world, you see, and with a tremendous amount of a remote past going back to Sanskrit times and even earlier, and coming down right to the modern challenges of uh, life in society and life in the 20th and the 21st centuries. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, you've always emphasized more of the inner growth for an actor, for an individual. And this was a change in how acting was viewed when you brought it in. Yes. How difficult was making that transition for students? It was not all that difficult because you need to know how to approach the youngsters, how to approach the young people. They communicated through Indian languages. Therefore, you had to have a certain familiarity with the Indian languages. Naturally, it was the more prominent Indian languages like Hindi, Hindustani, Urdu, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it was also a way in which I could educate myself, get an education, and through people who had been brought up in those traditions. Because those traditions not only appear to you linguistically, it appeared to you in the very formation of yourself as a human being and as a person who represented 20th and 21st century India. And therefore, how wide was our horizon going to be? How remote was it going to be? This how forward should it look, etc.? Maintaining the steadiness and the development and the seriousness of growth in India. And you know, India's fertile soil, it has always remained fertile soil. That is why it attracted people from all over the world. All over the world, people came to India. And therefore, it had the Indians who formerly, shall we say, they were sort of a village society. They were no longer a village society. They were on a much larger scale, much, much larger scale. And when these responsibilities fell on individuals, whether they were in the, in, in the performing arts or whether they were in other art forms and so on, there was a tremendous liability, great challenge. It was taken up. It was taken up with great success because this translated itself not only into the theatre, but also into the film medium. And that was a very important means of communication nationwide. Because even as you open it up to the larger languages like Hindi, Hindustani, etc. and so on, similarly it had an enormous scale for reference. True. And therefore it was, for me it was a means of education. I educated myself through those languages. You've had a very, very uh, tremendous influence on a lot of actors and not only changed their approach to acting, but I think change their approach to life. What is it in a teacher that makes this transition possible? That the very material that you use in order to communicate ideas, in this case being the theatre, you take quite seriously as a means of communication. You take it seriously. And that is how you begin to discover yourself. You're taking up this language. Language on a national scale and later on an international scale has such a tremendous perceptive power, not only through the eyes, but through all the antennae which the human body has and the mind and the soul and so on and so forth in reaching out and unifying the country as a whole. And that is what Hindi did. Mm. In the long run, Hindi is precisely what it did. Wonderful. So when a lot of people talk of discipline, they say that somewhere creativity at the cost of discipline. But you've proved that creativity and discipline coexist beautifully. Yes, indeed. How did you manage that? Well, first of all, to open one's own mind to the whole world and not to consider always the wars and so on around your country, around your subcontinent and so on and so forth, to be the contours, as it were, of the world you live in. It's a vast world, an enormous world in terms of time, in terms of space, in terms of place, etc., etc. It's huge and it had a tremendous impact. And it was an impact that even stunned the British because the British, when they began to... Uh, first of all, the British sells apart because only English, 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 Angrezi, Angrezi, and the rest of it. And the development of Indian languages from the regions and so on, and also from the classical times, was left to the Indians to plot their way uh, through the past and into the future. But we had to find ourselves. Therefore, when a person took charge of a situation like this, he had to, in all humility, accept training, quietly and assiduously, and with an open mind, and what shall we say, with no balance in one particular direction, linguistic direction or another or another, you're talking about the country as a whole, as a whole. And it was largely through Hindi, Hindustani, Urdu, that this kind of thing was done. The rest were provincial languages. So when we think of plays and the name Al-Kazi comes to mind, you think of those fabulous backdrops, those haunting stages, a split level, bringing reality 
into so called perceived reality yes what suddenly made you come upon the idea of doing this it's not sudden it's all part of the history of art since time began it's all been like this all over the world and i think it was the geographical position of india in the contours of the country as a whole that made everything so central and made everything at the same time so universal so you could converse you can only converse with people if you are also prepared to listen to them therefore all that you had therefore is an exchange of ideas and you are exchanging ideas with the entire world through hindi through hindustani through english and through the various forms of plays that you are doing because so many of them are related to the very forms which are part of your native theater without you realizing it so bringing theater from a closed auditorium back into the open and really connecting it yes that was truly wonderful yes because uh, it arose out of my ignorance what i mean say really more is my pursuit finding a way what does it all mean how are you going to communicate is it just something which appears in paper in paperback books and so on which is translated into this language that language that language you begin to relate it to the meaning and the significance of all those forms in your own time and for you yourself along with all the people around you in your day to day to day to day to existence and then you find that you are only one part of humanity in the world as a whole you're only one part you accept it with humility but you accept it with all its challenges and when you open your mind you open your heart you open your soul to all those challenges through the exhibitions that you have through the books that you have through the libraries that you have uh, through the uh, exchanges of cultural forms of expression all over the country so that when you're talking about hindi you're not uh, restricting yourself to delhi taking it across the country as a whole and you're taking the whole generations with you and if you've been there for 20 30 years etc you've been doing it for generations and therefore you can't do it alone you have to carry them with you and they have to carry you with them but you have to open your mind because recording. dear friends we are no longer in medieval times we are no longer in the stone age we are in the age of science we're in the age of the open mind with the age of the universal human being so the whole world internationally all over has opened up to us and just as we have opened our eyes we have opened we've got to open our mind we've got to open our soul and we're so excited and enriched by that and not only does that kind of excitement take you forward it takes the other people forward it takes the people in the audience forward it takes the people coming from abroad and watching you to a certain extent a little distantly a little saying oh my god we are going to see indian theater through this that the rest of it and they get quite completely amazed at the skill at the potency at the power and at the capacity for it to generate itself into the future so all those are challenges you see and you have to accept them because that is the meaning of life at a personal level sir what is theater for you it's a means of self communication to begin with then it is a means of communicating with members of your family various age groups and so on various region groups and so on of which constitutes a, generally the, the family in india they are not necessarily restricted to any one particular part of india but opens it is a beginning it is a first step that you are moving around the subcontinent as a whole and accepting it with open arms and then enjoying the excitement of it and the beauty of it and the range of it and the depth of it mm-hmm. so you have resurrected an entire history of mankind and you've got to go on doing that because as you've come across a resurrected history of mankind but you've got to contribute to it your work every uh, thing that you do is a further contribution to that is a further extending of the boundaries and so on of breaking down the walls that prevent you from communicating with your neighbor from communicating with people from across the oceans etc from people communicating with the past and the rest of it and that is i think something that these people found wonderful and one of the causes was because of the presence also of the parsis and their language particularly in cities like bombay okay in delhi in calcutta and so on these are people whose consciousness was awakened by the new areas that they are forced to explore and they were forced to discover for themselves and those discoveries they had to share with other people around them and they had to have discussions and exchange of ideas etc regarding this is it important part of our history 
Does it reveal ourselves to ourselves, etc.? How do we modify ourselves for the 21st century? What do we do for the next centuries, etc., etc.? So there are great challenges which are very exciting. You have this amazing love for books and libraries. Yes. What started this love? My father. My father, an, he came from a good Arab family, but he left Saudi Arabia. Why did he leave Saudi Arabia? It's not something that I immediately found an answer to immediately. I may have found the, about 50 years later, after I lived alongside my father in Pune. And Pune attracted cultures from all over the world because it was a part of the British Empire and therefore it attracted people from the British Empire which was already so widespread. It is truly a huge empire scale. And when these people started interacting with you, finding out things from you, they found how modern Indian culture is. It has nothing to do with just the past. It has made such a tremendous contribution to the present to your immediate present, to the multiple levels in which Indian society lives and therefore all they are part of the larger Indian family and we've got to know ourselves, discover ourselves, share things with ourselves, etc. And because also the British at that time were more open-minded. They don't, didn't just come as people who are conquering territories, etc. They felt, yes, these are fields that they came across, but they were vast fields. They were fields on such a scale that there's nothing in the West to compare with the scale that Asia stood for, that India stood for, both in terms of space as well in terms of time in the history of mankind. So you were always surrounded with books as you grew up? Yes, my father, the first thing that my father did was to get one of these very beautiful places where, which could hold books. Like a and cabinet. Were, absolutely the cabinet. And you worked at the bottom of that and the books were all arranged on top of you over there. And the little money that your father originally gave you or, or whatever it was, it is something that was a beginning and to help you expand your frontiers. If you add that with this Arab quest, worldwide quest, coming eastwards as it were, and shunning the west, coming more eastwards, trying to discover your ground eastwards, and then related to the discovery that other people were trying to make, going westwards, seeing then how can we be modern for heaven's sake? We're tired of our buffaloes. We're tired of our this, that, and the rest of it. We're tired of our uh, pan and people spitting all over the place and beeries and this, that, and the rest. There's something larger in the quest of mankind for, from this. And we've got to go. And we're living now, for God's sake, in a modern world. We're not in medieval times. We're not in the Middle Ages. Today, we are no longer a part of a much larger kind of a universal power which you know controls the entire world because that power has discovered as to how small it is, how petty it is compared to the enormous history of India and how the history of India has been accepted by the ordinary people in the gutters and the streets and the more learned people and then the great thinkers and enthusiasts, etc. And therefore, over a period of time, they built a sort of a, a fantastic relationship India between India cultures India in different parts of India and we came together. And then you had people with open minds. You had Jawaharlal Nehru, who was a very fine mind intellectually, etc. So tell us a bit about your relationship with him. Well, it was a wonderful relationship. I didn't go out because I was too shy. I, I, you must remember that I came from Bombay. I was not from the center of India, etc. I was shy about my use of the Indian languages, particularly of Hindi and the rest of it. I had to prepare myself for that. And... Uh, but because we had people who were looking forward for freedom, it was a, India was then involved in a struggle for freedom, for freedom from the British, freedom from the West, etc., discovering itself, etc., and not negating itself, not despising itself. And therefore, one of the ways in which you don't despise itself is the manner in which you look at other cultures and see what other cultures have been able to contribute to their societies and to see what is applicable in your own terms, in your own environment, etc., Mm -hmm. and then come forward. But he was a great fan of your plays and your productions. He was. He was a great fan. And uh, he supported me a great deal. And uh, it is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And uh, I was very touched by it. I was invariably very, very, very touched by it. And what had happened was that whenever there was anything to do with this family, I was always phoned by All India Radio or whatever it was and asked to go and conduct this meeting over there or go and explore this. What is the significance of this event which has taken place over here and how does it fit in with the steps that we are taking, etc. It is tremendous because on the one hand, it opened India to the rest of the world and opened the rest of the world to India. 
You have to open a whole world. You have to open so many universes. And you have to recognize the fact that you belong to so many different universes and you have to tie them together. True. So what role does theatre play in the larger consciousness of society? It plays a very important role because it humanizes the human presence. It humanizes it. You're presented with what is going on. Somebody has seen what is going on. The playwright has seen that, put down his own uh, thoughts and ideas, etc., and got together his various characters, whichever parts of India they represented, the kind of language that they spoke, the kind of behavior that they had, and so on, what their values, and so on, that they stood for. So on the one hand, the conflicts, and so on, that took place within Indian society, and the manner in which they had to open themselves up to the rest of the world, because the other powers, particularly the Western powers, had indeed opened themselves to the history of mankind as a whole. And therefore, we had to learn a great deal from them. And because there had been people in between, we were very lucky because we were not just touched by and constrained by a foreign power which had come to India in order to grab this, to grab that, to grab that, etc. Well, there was there was the British on the one hand. At the same time, the British were over there, the French were over there. And the French were very sophisticated in their taste and their understanding of, of mankind. And so you had so much to go to. You could go to a French college, you could learn French, you could learn Persian, you could learn Arabic, you could learn study of the Quran, etc. And all this was terrific. And the Jesuits, because what was the Jesuits? After all, they were a group of people who had been touched by Christianity and whose vision of the world, whose concept of the world and so on, they felt was deep enough and important enough to be able to communicate to so-called poor, uh, backward sort of peoples, etc., etc. So they came to the Indian mind. So they came to the Indian individual. And they found that the Indian individual was not merely a person who's playing around in the fields, etc., and planting this and planting that. It was something much deeper. He had a history which was greater and vaster and deeper than the history of the West. Why? Because he walked barefoot all the time on the earth. The connect was so strong. Yes, the connection was strong. But at the same time, there was this awakening. Oh my God, the French have come to India. Oh my God, the Germans have come to India. Oh my God, the British have come to India, and so on. So India became, you know, a representative of so many ways of looking at the world from all over the world. And as we went along, we learnt a great deal from this. So with the onslaught of so many different kind of media now coming yes, center yes. stage today, what sort of an identity should theatre forge for itself? You see, India, the identity that is forged is by a study of the history of mankind. Because you go back to the past. In order to understand yourself, you've got to understand your parents, you've got to understand your grandparents, and so on and so forth, till you go back to your original homeland. But then all these doors have been opened to you, the windows have been opened to you, etc. And there's a certain freshness in the air, in the air, the atmosphere and the rest. And then the other sort of things that divided societies because of their ranks, because of their monetary ranks in society, etc. Now it is the society of the mind. And it is really your thoughts and your ideas and so on, on that kind of level, on that kind of basis. Because inwardly, on the one hand, we were trying to discover ourselves. At the same time, we are trying to free ourselves from the British. We are trying to free ourselves from the French free ourselves from the Germans and so on. Mm -hmm. And it was there. And they were very good in teaching, very good in communicating. 